Hello gamers, my name is Rushcode and welcome back to the final tutorial on how to use regex in Barotrauma. In this video we're going to learn about capture groups and conditionals. And once again, if you don't know anything about character classes, quantifiers, or anchors and alternation, then please go check out the other three videos before watching this one. So before we get started, I just wanted to point out something. I've actually disconnected these two components, the second memory component to the regex, because the second memory component will normally automatically set the output for my regex over here in this box. I've disconnected this so that I can directly control the output inside the regex itself while demonstrating some of the examples to you. And throughout this whole video we're going to be using capture groups so I'm going to switch this on. If you're using it as well make sure you tick this box. The first capture group type is a numbered capture group. All this involves is having a couple of round brackets and closing whatever you're trying to capture inside a group. And if you only have one group in your entire regex, then that will be group number one. If you have two groups or more, then you'll have group one, two, three, so on and so forth. And depending on whether you nest them inside each other or write them side by side, just keep in mind the outermost brackets get a group number first, followed by groups that are inside it. So for this example, let's say I want my input to be A, B, C, D, and I want my regex to pass this. So in the regex, I could type A, B, C, D, and this fails because number one, I've not actually put any output, and number two, there's no capture groups here. If I put a zero here, then this passes, right? But it passes in a very specific way. It will output whatever it found as an input. And the reason is because I've ticked use capture group. If I untick this, then the output is literally whatever I put in here. So using capture groups is very unique and very useful in situations where you want to pass the value through your regex and not just create a true or false statement. So the zero here is like a sort of like a symbol just to indicate that you want everything that you found to be carried back out. Now if I put a bracket around B and C, nothing changes with the output because this zero represents the default group which is just everything. You could say that this whole thing is group zero. If I wanted to just output B and C, then I would put a one here. So this is saying that for my output, I want to produce group number one if it is captured. And B, C is inside group number one because there's a pair of brackets there. If I change my input so that there's only a B and no C, this will fail because it couldn't find B, C. Something else to know here is if I put a bracket around D, I can now get the regex to output group number two. If I remove the brackets, this will fail instantly because group 2 doesn't exist anymore. Since BC is the only specific group I can get out from here, I would have to change my output back to 1. Another note is if you changed A to have its own group, the output changes and creates an A instead of a BC. The reason is because A is group number 1 now and BC has become group number 2. So this is the priority thing where the first group that is written takes the first number or the outermost brackets. There's nothing nested here so it doesn't really matter, but it is the first group. So keep in mind how you sequence your groups. This next one is pretty much the same thing, it's just that you're using a name for your group instead of a number. It takes a little more work, but it's useful if you have a whole bunch of groups and you're just after the one group. So let's say I wanted to call BC, but not by group number one, but instead as group with some kind of name. I would put a question mark, angle bracket, and I can type name, close angle bracket, and this will fail because I've not actually called group name, or and there is no group number one right now, so I have to type in name. This will call BC again. And you can change that to whatever you like. You can call this output. Just make sure your output matches that name as well. But it can be a little confusing to use the word output. So I'd rather use some of the name. Just keep in mind that the casing is sensitive in this case. So if you were to put the wrong casing for this, then it will fail. But yes, you can change this to anything you like. I can say what I want and just make sure that the group name matches that. And it will always output the capture group. A very important note here is on other platforms, regex can be quite flexible with how you create the output, but in Barotrauma, you can only output one capture group. You cannot do more than that. You certainly cannot arrange them in different orders. So for example, if I went back to numbered groups and just made B, C and D two separate groups, I could call group number one as B, C or group number two as D but I cannot call both of the groups at the same time. In most cases, putting a dollar sign in front of them is supposed to make it work, but it just doesn't because Barotrauma's c -sharp code does not allow for that. If I'm reading this right, this line right here to do with a public variable from a their own defined dictionary variable type does not do anything beyond grabbing one capture group as the output. 
if you look inside this part of the code, there is nothing in here that identifies multiple groups written in a single string. So yes, unfortunately you can't do something like two and one and expect a D, B, C to come out or one and two and expect B, C, D to come out. You can only put one or two. If you want everything to come out, you can still just put a zero, but those are the limitations inside Barotrauma. And unless there is an update to this, which I think is quite expensive for them to do, these are your only options for controlling the output. This final capture group is not actually a capture group. It's a non-capturing group. So let's say you had a situation where A is its own group and B, C is its own group but you wanted BC to be known as group one. Right now, if I were to call group one, it's going to be A. I have to call group two to get BC. To fix this, you can ignore A, but still keep it as a group of sorts by putting your question mark and colon there, making it a non-capturing group. What this means is BC is now known as group one. So you can refer to it using a one, and there you go, you get a BC. Very useful when you want to skip certain groups, but still keep them grouped inside round brackets. This next one is about conditionals that use capture groups. It goes something like this. If regex has captured group one somewhere, then search for something or else search for something else. In this example, you can see all I've done is change the D and put it inside a conditional. So in this conditional, we're saying if group one has been found, which in this case it would be because there is a BC in there, then we're gonna search for a D. So we only search for D if we found BC. Otherwise we search for an E. And the output is still BC just because I've put group number one here, which is BC. If I wanted to get D out as a group, I would not be able to do that right now just because that's a conditional. Those round brackets do not mean a capture group. If I wanted it to be, then I'll have to put another set of brackets around those. Now I can put a two here and it will call the D. Without those brackets, it will just outright fail. Now, if I wanted it to search for E, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. The only way it's going to search for E is if it doesn't find BC. But right now I am forcing regex to find BC in order to do anything beyond that. So I'd have to make this optional so that regex knows that it can skip looking for that if it doesn't exist in the input. And then it'll be able to find E. What I'll also do is make sure that the conditional is grouped in its own capture group. So now if I call it, it will show up. When we change the input to have no BC and just put an E there, this will still work simply because BC is optional, but it hasn't been found, which means instead of finding D, we find E next. This final syntax is the same as the previous. It's just that you'd be checking if a named group was found in your search. If it was, then you search for something or else you search for something else. In terms of syntax, all you would need to do is change, let's see, you would have to put the name here, but to call it from an actual group, you need to name BC's group as name. And this failed because there is no group two anymore. Since we renamed BC as group name, the second group is now group one. So if I put a one here, it'll give us the E. The beauty of this though, is that I could call out this group if I wanted to as well. Although I don't think it's gonna give us anything. Yeah, it doesn't change the output, which means it just doesn't have any update. But if I were to go back to the input and make this A, B, C, D, we now can call the B, C, or we can call group one, which is the D, or we can push this a little bit further and make it a little more convoluted by putting a question mark, angle bracket, and say cat. And what this is doing is creating a named group for our conditional. So if I want to call out the D, I'd have to type cat here. In my personal opinion, I find this stuff really confusing. It takes a lot of practice to really get your head around it. So the best advice I can give you is to just go and try it out on a bunch of websites like regex101.com or regexr.com and try it out here in Barotrauma as well to see what sort of results you get. Just keep in mind that the limitation on your output is only one capture group. You can't put more than one in there, with the exception that putting zero gives you back everything that was in your input. All right, guys, so that is it for the tutorials on regex and barotrauma. I don't know if there's anything else that I should mention or should talk about, but if there is, please let me know down in the comments below. So thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Rush code out.